Okay. If that is what the work needed for the local painting, we can add them up and say globally the work is the sum over all eyes of those local works. And those local works are approximately some constant tau multiplied by the respective angle theta i. But now that there is a problem. That is not in the form we need. Well, you know, the simplistic way is if you don't have that in the given form, wait. So you multiply by delta t and you divide by delta t. Isn't that a great idea? Well, then you have delta t in this in this formula, and then you have to get rid of that delta t somehow. So of course the idea is great, but you have to work on. Well, of course uh, that constant pulls out, and you have to really understand what is the ratio. What does it mean? So what is this theta i? You look at the angle between two adjacent pieces. What is that? Well, that is how the tangent line turns. Right? And what is that ratio? That ratio is the rate of change of the tangent line with respect to time. So this theta i over delta t is the rate of change of the tangent line with respect to time. Does it remind you of something after I said it twice? The rate of change of the rate of how tangent line turns to long the curve. Curvature. So is that the curvature? Okay. If it is the curvature, then we know the curvature doesn't depend on delta t. So we will have a decent formula here that translates into an integral. But is it the rate of change of the tangent line with respect to time? Well, that's the problem. We expect the curvature not to depend on time. So what was it? What was the curvature exactly? The rate of change of the tangent line with respect to distance, yes. So this is not the curvature. Theta i, well, distance is that delta L. Theta i over delta L is the curvature. And we are dealing with something else. So what do we do? Well, one way, simplistic way is, if you don't see something, make it. Right? How will I make it? If I want this to be equal to that, well, of course, times something, right? And that something has to be delta O over delta T. 
just to preserve the point. And now I see the curvature, but I see something else. Did it make my life better? Can I understand what that is? <coughs> the rate of change of the distance traveled in the time, with respect to time. Well, that's the speed. Well, derivative of position, magnitude of velocity. So that's a simplistic way of, of doing that. But what, well, look at this equality. What, what is it? What is it exactly? So the question was, the angle of turn depends on time. And we are looking at the rate of change. And then we recall that, well, we better understand the dependence of the angle on the length. But then, doesn't length depend on time? Well, it does. And our parameterization describes precisely how that length depends on time. So what we argue here is that we say that the angle depends on time, but also the angle depends on length, and the length is a function of time. And what we see is a composition. Right? So this dependence of angle on time is a composition of dependence on length and length depending on time. And this formula makes perfect precise sense. If you think about that composition, that's a chain rule. So you decompose this dependence in a meaningful way and you apply the chain rule. So that the rate of change is the product of those rates. Well, that's the, one of my best favorite examples of the application of the chain rule, a meaningful application. It is not that someone told you, okay, you have a function theta of L, and then you have a function L of T, find the rate of change of theta with respect to T. Oh, yes, that's the chain rule. So now you have to recover. You have to recover that intermediate variable, depending on what you know, and introduce the chain rule into the picture. All right, so then the formula looks much better. It is sum of theta times theta i over delta l times delta l over delta t, and all fractions there make perfect sense, multiplied by delta t, and what are the meanings of those fractions? We keep adding over i, is theta times the curvature, uh, curvature is kappa, kappa of ti, curvature at that particular point, multiplied by the magnitude of velocity. Multiplied by delta t. And now we are ready to integrate. Now the work is limit of those sums. Limit as delta t goes to zero. It sums all i's L times t i times magnitude of b of t i times delta t. That is the integral. Now t changes from a to b 
for the integrate is a constant tau times the curvature at the given point t times the speed at the given point t with respect to t. That's it, that's the one.